to pass. Throws. Pick. Horrible pass. Oh my god. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, um, just finished doing my uh, Friday night live stream, and shout out to uh, Walker Wade, because Walker Wade shared with me Norm's rant on Jerry Jones. This is from November 16th, 2015. You know, Stephen Jones says, we don't have a culture problem. We don't. Listen to this, because this is gold. This team and what they've been able to roll out, and you expect to get a win. I... I want to tell you, you have to. Donovan and I are, are in the process, I really mean this, a process of forming a relationship, of working every day, about who takes this segment, or you've got this opinion, or I've got that opinion. Every day, I'll come in and say, eh, well, Donovan and Michael said, maybe we want to go this direction. Yeah, that's a good direction. What I appreciate about Donovan is he's given me at times three or four moments to still go off. And I wish to go off on this football team. All right. Go off, go Norm. On. If you enjoy being laughed at, Jerry, then revel in it. Climb right into the spotlight and revel in it. Your team is now the most ridiculous team in the National Football League. The pregame shows, the postgame shows, all over network TV, all the commentators, they're laughing at you. They're watching you unravel in public. It's like a circus. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen, and watch the Dallas Cowboys unravel right before your eyes. Look at them in the locker room, fighting and screaming. Look at them on social media. Look how they look like they don't give a damn on the field. Look at a coach that you have castrated. Does Jason Garrett have any control of personnel? Absolutely not. If he had control of personnel, some of the people that started the year on this team wouldn't be here. Does he have any control of bliss discipline? Oh, please. Please. That's funnier than a Seinfeld routine. Does he have control of a lineup? I suggest he doesn't even have control of a lineup. Who announced McFadden was going to be the starting running back? Who announced Castle was going to replace Whedon? And let me ask you something. If the coaching staff had its way, would Rolando McLean have been back here? And if he were back here, would he have been benched by now for some of his play in the last few weeks? Does any other coach in the league have a situation where he's been so neutered? He does not control discipline. He has no final word. Hardy's late for meetings, virtually skips a meeting. Any discipline? I don't know. Coach Jones, what do you think? You run the team. You run the lineup. You run the roster. You run the discipline. Hey, should Garrett be yelled at? Yeah, he should. Yeah. But on the other hand, does he have charge of the locker room? If he goes in the locker room and puts his foot down, do 14 people giggle? Or do they sit there tweeting during his talk? Let me tell you something. If you beg to look ridiculous, Jerry, you got it. You got it. When Des Bryant went off on Rich Dalrymple, he should have been yanked into your office and said, this happens again, and I'm finding you a game check. When Hardy misses meetings, he should have been yanked into your office and say, listen, young man, somewhere along the line, you got to stop this. You have been benched this week. You do not play against Tampa. I don't give a damn who we play. I don't care if we have to run out Ryan Russell or Jack Crawford or some Yahoo that I fish out of the stands 10 minutes to game time. At some point, doesn't your soul hurt, Jerry? Doesn't it hurt 
to keep giving guys like Josh Brent and Joseph Randall and Greg Hardy and ad nauseum chances to play again and they laugh at you, they take your money and they shoot you a freaking finger every week? At some, where the hell is your soul, Jerry? Where, is where soul? the hell is it? Do you not care that everybody laughs like crazy at your football team? It's one thing to lose. It's another thing to lose when you've also sacrificed your damn soul. This locker room has no one in charge of it because the man who's supposedly in charge of it has no right to discipline. Get your butt down in locker room, Jerry, and you discipline. You go locker to locker and tell Cole Beasley, shove that phone as far up as it goes, baby. You're off Twitter. (laughs) And Des, you do that again, and we are going to have a serious monetary talk, pal. And I don't care if I have to discipline you or Hardy or name it. Pick anybody else who steps out of line. I can lose without you guys. I can lose without you. And damn, yesterday we did lose without Greg Hardy. All right. That was 2015. And that, there was no Dak Prescott. You can't blame that on Dak. Now, this, this was last year. I want you to listen to this. Okay? Keep in mind what you just heard. No discipline. No respect. Coach has been undercut. Now, keep in mind, Mike McCarthy is on a one-year deal. One-year deal. Mike Zimmer's on a one-year deal. Um, and listen, because the thing is, I keep saying this, but I keep, and I, I forget myself sometimes. I talk too damn much. I can't remember the stuff I say. But every offseason is always cray-cray. And we were talking about the worst off season of the century for the Cowboys last year. Listen. And right, we're almost in April. And I went back to January one. Think about how think about how negative it's all been. Yeah. And and I and I you know, God bless the Cowboys. I know you guys are the flagship. They let you guys say whatever you want to say. For like I my time, my three years there, there's only one time, Sean, that they said, Yeah, don't ask that question. Everything else, it's been fair game. Yeah. Not everybody does that. We start with the Washington uh, Commanders. Yes. But their flagship station saying, oh, thank God we can talk about the Commanders now. <laughs> no, no longer affiliated with them. Right. So, but I looked at really, when I, Kevin, when I looked at just like a day-by-day timeline, you know, they beat the Eagles on January 8th. They lost two out of their three games, right? They blamed the officials for basically two of the three losses, which is terrible. Dak Prescott sits there and endorses fans throwing junk at officials after the San Francisco game. He has to come out and apologize. You've got a PR director who retires. Nobody, no big deal. Two weeks later, he has, there's this horrible story about him being accused of voyeurism, which he denied. Yep. But the Cowboys have to throw a $2.5 million check at four cheerleaders. Dak Prescott has another surgery. The Cowboys trade a wide receiver that they used the number one pick on back in 2018 in exchange for a fifth because the coaching staff doesn't like him, right? Then they give all this money to a guy who tore his ACL on January 2nd. Michael Gallup's not going to be ready for camp, right? Tank Lawrence is their best pass rusher. He comes back, which is, that's a highlight. Jerry Jones gets named in a, you know, Springer-like lawsuit. (laughs) Randy Gregory whom the Cowboys stuck by despite the fact that he had done nothing for them for years, yep. gives them the middle finger, right, on a flip. Then they've got to cut Lyle Collins because the coaching staff didn't like him. But they kept their punter. <laughs> <laughs> Mac, Mac why, why is Stephen Jones the Alan Greenspan of the NFL? <laughs> That's a great one-liner, by the way. Thank you very much. Uh, because it's so, we see all these teams talk about, we're in cap hell, we're in cap hell. And then they go out and they trade for Tyreek Hill or they make these giant moves and add this big contract. I know the salary cap is a real thing. And, you know, I've talked to Stephen Jones, whom I like a lot, and he's, he has come to admit and embrace the idea. If you're going comes. into free agency, 
that means you're overspending on that player because you made a big mistake two or three years ago. Okay, that's fine. That's that sound philosophy. Yeah. And are you getting any better? Are the Dallas Cowboys today, no. today on March 23rd, part of March, March 25th, are they any better today, Sean? No. No way. They were on. Okay. And no one, and no one, not even the biggest Homer fan. I mean, not even Mickey Spagnuolo would make that kid. Mickey might. Mickey <laughs> might, but. He tried. <laughs> yeah, he would try. But I don't think anyone would say that. They, they all, no, and, and they all so say like, it's, it's early. It's early. Oh, I know. And, like, are they going to – there's there's nobody left that they're going to get off the street that's going to make him any better. The only thing that's going to make him any better, they think Dak Prescott is as good as Aaron, Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> that they can put pretty good players around him, and, and he'll make them great, and they'll win 10 or 11, 12 games. And the NFC East still is – garbage yes and the nfc yeah i mean that's i mean it, it absolutely baffles me just how bad this division remains and if you're like well where, where's our and, and mac and mac the greatest stat right now in sports the most embarrassing 17 straight years without a back-to-back division winner in that division there you go. that's that awesome. was it there you go and so do you think the cowboys are going to break that streak <laughs> yeah they might no seriously who's who's who would who's better than them right now who could unseat them? Right, right. The Eagles? The Giants are the one team to me, Mac, that... that